Aora. A world where mortals live, die, and are reborn through the turning of the wheel. The cycle of reincarnation watched over by the gods and made possible through pillars of a mystical substance known as Audra. Five years ago, you traveled from your home to the Deerwood, a nation that had waged war against the incarnated god of light, Aethys, resulting in his destruction. The country suffered from a plague of hollowborn, infants born without souls, that many believed was punishment for killing a god. In an ancient, secluded ruin, you witnessed a secret ritual that inadvertently transformed you into a Watcher. One who can see and speak with souls. The ritual also gave you horrible visions. Waking nightmares of a past life that threatened your sanity. To put them to rest, you pursued the man who had led the ritual. A seemingly immortal agent of the gods known as Theos Ix Arcanon. With divine assistance, you confronted and defeated Theos, ending your visions and resolving the Hollowborn Crisis. In so doing, you also learned the great secret that Theos had protected, that the ancient Empire of Anguith had transformed themselves into gods. Your visions finally put to rest, you retired to the castle of Cad Nua, built atop a massive statue of pure Audra, where you ruled in relative peace and prosperity. Made a nice story. You fixing up that old keep? Lifting the curse? <laughs> Must have told it a hundred times. But something got to gnawing at me. Thinking the spirits there weren't really at rest. But maybe the gods weren't finished with us. So you wake to a sleepless world, the in-between of life and death. Follow your memories. You have been here before. You have seen past the shroud. You are a watcher now, and a watcher you will stay. A watcher sees souls. Knows their pasts, and the souls see them back. A dubious honor, inheriting a fortress both broken and cursed. What is a god? Hmm? A higher power? A rewarder of good deeds and punisher of the wicked? The gods aren't real, but something else entirely. Something created by people.
And did you ever consider that these were things you were never meant to understand? That their comprehension is beyond you? Let the world see. Let them decide what to do. The wheel has turned again, Watcher. Come. An aged dwarf shares this strange floating platform with you. His face is creased by so many wrinkles that his features lie buried amid shadowy pockets of skin. Still, the dwarf's well-practiced habits have left telltale tracks of a welcoming rictus across his visage. You can see his smile coming before it blooms, reshaping the dwarf's face from a hanging sack of flesh into something resembling an oddly carved Mary Gore replete with unhealthy bumps and discolored splotches. The creases of the dwarf's face tighten into a smile as he gives you a courteous nod. Sit. Please. Thank you for joining us, Watcher of Cad Nua. The gaunt woman seated at the table is clad in time-worn black armor that seems too massive for her to move in. A pale, slender neck rises from the gorget, topped by a hollow face. The milky skin stretched across it is delicate and translucent, like parchment that has been scraped clean too many times. She is preoccupied with the arrangement of cards on the table between you. With each movement, her armor squeaks and groans as though bearing an incredible weight. She places a final card, gives a nod of satisfaction, and raises her eyes to meet yours. Your brush with the Divine has drained you of your powers, fractured your memories. Look upon these cards. They represent the courses of your life. You alone know best how they flowed. Arrange them to fit what you remember. Does everything appear to be in order? Good. Welcome to the beyond. I am Bera. One half, anyway. She points a finger in the direction of the dwarf who led you here. Though the movement is slight, her gauntlet squeaks like a rusty hinge. The dwarf's rictus returns as he nods in the woman's direction. Tell me, do you remember when we last met? You prayed for my help in reaching Theos, beyond the Court of Penitence, and pledged yourself to me. You made similar vows to Rimmergond, Helia, and Galawain. The skin of her face pulls tight as the edges of her mouth curl into a macabre smile. The wheel turns for all mortals, Watcher. You had to know that sooner or later your turn would come. She slaps a card down, a broken bell and a tower. The crack of the card on the table ripples through your soul like a shockwave, leaving you momentarily disoriented. 
Her fingertips slowly drag away from the card, faintly creaking as they retreat across the table. There will be time to deal with that later. Her black eyes stare through you, unblinking for a long, uncomfortable moment. You had need of the gods once before. Now it seems we have need of you. The being that occupied Odnua's statue beneath your castle was the dead god, Aethys. Of this, we are certain. What we do not know is what his intentions are. Though Aethys stole a large fragment of your soul, you were strong enough to survive the onslaught and enter the in-between. You and he are still connected. He has chosen a body made of living Atra, perfused with the power of thousands of souls, including yours. It should be little difficulty for an experienced Watcher to find him. No, but neither is your body truly alive. Your lungs draw breath, your heart pumps blood, but your flesh is as soulless as a hollowborn. That is, until I return you. She delicately places a card upright on the table. The art depicts souls flowing out of a pillar of Audra. Good. Before you return to Aora as my herald, you must remember who you were, the last whisper of life and death. For a moment, the sockets of her eyes darken, leaving the pits of a death's head gazing out at you. When you can picture your own face, the beyond will lead you back to your own kind, to the world of mortals.
Go forth now, Watcher, as my herald. Know that I do not give you this title lightly. When the time comes, you will have the power to reveal the souls that cling to you. To open the gateway from the in-between to the waking world. Find Aethys. Learn his plans. When I have cause to talk to you, I will summon you. With a quick gesture of her hand, you feel a sharp pain in what would be your chest. The pain continues, intruding deeper into your soul. Looking down, you see a small lump of darkness roiling within you. The darkness lingers there, but the pain abates and fades entirely within the span of a few seconds. A chime. Do not fear, Harold. It will not harm you unless you choose to cross me. Again. The pits of her eyes darken briefly, flashing a death's head your way. The translucent mask quickly returns, and her gauntleted hand gestures to the dwarf hovering nearby. The dwarf nods, contorts his face with his odd smile, and gestures to a new door. The return to your body feels like waking after a fitful drunken sleep. The rocking of the ship sends pain jolting through your limbs. Crashing waves hammer inside your skull. My lady, have you returned to us? The voice echoes from inside the bust. The remains of the steward of Cad Nua. How are you feeling? Considering how long you've been unconscious, I fear that's to be expected. I hate to cast a pall over your recovery, but I'm afraid I have some bad news for you. Had Nua has been destroyed. Aethus possessed the statue of Maros Nua and rose from the ground, consuming the souls of all nearby. It is only by the exceptional strength of your soul that you survived. And even then, just barely. The further Aethus withdrew, the weaker you became. We chartered this ship and followed him to the Deadfire Archipelago. I know not how, but it seems he has retained a piece of your soul, and proximity to it has brought you back. Misfortune's brewing topside with... Magrans fires the captain stirs. An older man with ale-sour breath rubs his bloodshot eyes and stares at you. Engrim, the smell of drink on your breath could wake the very dead. Now what's this about? Pirates. They're demanding parley with you, Captain. It would be wise to arm yourself first, my lady. You'll find equipment in the wardrobe next to me. You should prepare for battle, my lady. I would not wager on the mercy of pirates. The pirates of Deadfire are no tool.
have we here? A little sloop, lost and alone in the storm. I'll be taking your ship now, if you don't mind. And especially if you do. Give her up easy, and I'll see you get a swift death. It'll be bloody and agonizing, sure. But at least it'll be quick. Now you're getting it. Listen up, mates. I'm off to spear me a bigger fish. One with sharper teeth like. I'm trusting you lot not to cock this up. Don't damage the sloop when you take it. Play with the crew if you'd like, but don't bring me any prisoners. None that are alive. You had bad whip after him! It's a relief to see you awake, my lady. I worried you were in for another long sleep. Unfortunately, I believe we'll be needing the Defiant yet. Unless you mean to settle down on the island for good. Whatever your aims, I'd say you have a better chance of accomplishing them with some assistance. Let's look for survivors first. Supplies after that. For now, I'd say your best bet is to find some sign of civilization. If nothing else, we may be able to hire on a shipwright. My lady, if it is not too taxing, could you explain how it came to pass that you were returned to us? A 
perilous endeavor indeed. Castle or no castle, you are still my lady, and I will aid you to the best of my ability. Leave it to me. Help! Somebody! Looking better, Casita. That, or I'm worse off than I thought. <laughs> it's my leg, Matiko. It hurts even worse than it looks. I wasn't planning on going for a run, Casita. Ah, uh, it still hurts, but I can manage from here. Agrasima, have you found any of the others yet? I'll start a fire. If any of the others are out there, hopefully they'll see it and turn up. I'll see it done. Hope the rest of those sodden bastards may... Just in time for the fun. Fighting off motherless raiders one moment, flung into the freezing depths of Andra's bosom the next. Aye, Magran learns us poor bastards that a little excitement's good for the heart. Some others might think that blasphemy. There's no getting the ship back underway without repairs. Yonder road in land seems the best chance of that. You want to be kicking some of the corpses afore you go, see if some cry out. We need a crew if we're to set sail. I'll see you at the campfire, Captain. Magran's flame warms my soul, but these ale bones need a touch of the real thing. Good, good. I'll keep an eye out for others, Watcher, if you'll do the same. Mind the boars, Watcher. I can't hold them back. It is good to see you well, Watcher. 
I believe the boars were hoping for easy meat. The bosun, Beodal, is in that cave over there. Ran in after a boar. Stubborn old dwarf. I was able to calm one of the boars with a spell. For a time, at least. By the time I was through, I had lost sight of Beodal. I remained here, hoping he would return quickly. He has not. I will make for the campfire. I must get this pistol cleaned if it's going to be of any use. hurt yet no prisoners yes I'll see it I'll take care of it with pleasure a little blood.